Welcome to this tutorial on model-based design for quadcopter autopilot. From concept to prototype. Here is the outline of this tutorial. In this session, we will design the flight management for a quadcopter using Simulink and Stateflow. We'll develop flight mode transition logics, process input commands, and implement fail-safe mechanisms to ensure safe operation. The flight management of a drone plays a central role in ensuring safe, reliable, and autonomous operation by integrating multiple subsystems. It begins with signal processing, where the system interprets operator input commands, processes data from onboard sensors, and manages communication signals from ground control via the data link. In parallel, system monitoring continuously checks for anomalies such as lost input signals, sensor failures, degraded battery health, and payload issues. At its core, the flight management governs flight mode management, handling transitions between modes like manual, stabilized, autonomous, and emergency states. It also manages mode upgrades or downgrades based on flight conditions and supports fail-safe and fail-operational behaviors such as automatic return to home. The flight management also incorporates flight planning capabilities, including mission execution, no drone zone enforcement, and integration with onboard or cloud-based map databases. Finally, the flight management provides enunciation functions to inform operators of system status through warnings, cautions, and advisories, supporting timely decision-making and enhancing situational awareness. All these functions can be modeled, simulated, and verified using tools like Simulink and Stateflow, enabling a model-based design approach for robust drone system development. The flight management of a drone serves as a central integration hub, interfacing with various onboard and external systems to enable coordinated and intelligent operation. Key interfaces include Remote controller Provides manual or semi-autonomous command inputs from the pilot, including flight mode selection, mission control, and emergency commands. Ground control station Facilitates mission planning, telemetry monitoring, and remote configuration. The FMS exchanges bi-directional data with the GCS, including command reception and status updates. Database interfaces. The flight management accesses onboard or remote databases containing map data, terrain information, and no drone zones, which are essential for mission planning, geofencing, and autonomous navigation. Sensors. Interfaces with navigation system, perception system, and health monitoring system. These provide situational awareness and support redundancy and fault detection. Actuators While the flight control system typically generates low-level control signals, the flight management may interface indirectly through high-level mode commands, e.g., switch to hover, climb to altitude, that influence actuator behavior. Flight control system A tightly coupled interface where the FMS sends flight mode commands, navigation targets, and mission directives while receiving state estimates and control status. Payload. Interfaces with mission-specific equipment such as cameras, delivery systems, or environmental sensors. The flight management may control payload operation and monitor payload status for mission integrity. Battery management system. Provides real-time battery state of charge, health, temperature, and fault information. This data is used for mission planning, return to home triggers, and fail-safe decisions. Display and sound systems. These output interfaces support enunciation, delivering visual and audible alerts, warnings, cautions, advisories, to inform the operator or ground crew of system status and events. Recorder or data logger. Interfaces for storing flight logs, system states, and mission outcomes. This data is vital for post-flight analysis, debugging, compliance, and continuous system improvement. In this session, we will explore key components of the flight management system, including flight mode transition logic, remote controller command processing, ground control station waypoint handling, and the detection of lost RC and GCS signals. Let's begin with flight mode transition logic. This defines how the drone switches between modes like manual, autonomous, and return to home based on inputs and system status. 
We will use Stateflow to model this logic for clarity, safety, and ease of verification. If you're not familiar with Stateflow, it's a Simulink add-on for modeling and simulating decision logic using state machines and flowcharts. It's especially useful for representing complex control logic like mode transitions, fault handling, and supervisory control in systems such as drones. Stateflow enables you to design reactive behavior based on events, conditions, and timing in a graphical, simulation-friendly environment. To learn more, we recommend the free, self-paced online course Stateflow on Ramp, which takes about 1.5 hours to complete. Flight management simulation is a critical step in the development and testing of a drone and aircraft systems. It focuses on verifying the correct behavior of high-level flight logic under various operating conditions and failure scenarios. The simulation brings together multiple subsystems including ground control station, remote controller, and sensing system. Key aspects of flight management simulation include mode transition logic. The simulation replicates how the drone transitions between different flight modes such as stabilized mode, altitude mode, position mode, trajectory mode, and emergency procedures. This logic is typically modeled using state machines that define clear conditions for each transition, ensuring predictable and safe operation. Fault injection and fail-safe modes. To assess system robustness, the simulation includes fault injection such as sensor failure, signal dropout, actuator malfunction, and communication loss. The system's response to these faults is tested by activating fail-safe modes, such as return to home, hover in place, or emergency landing, ensuring continued safety during unexpected events. Flight mode transitions are a core component of a drone's flight management system, enabling the drone to adapt dynamically to operator commands and system health. The operator can manually switch between flight modes to match the mission requirements and environmental conditions. It will also automatically downgrade transitions due to sensor failures. Sensor health is continuously monitored. If a critical sensor fails, the system will automatically downgrade to a safer mode. The flight management also responds to critical external events, such as remote controller or ground control station signal lost, which triggers return to home or emergency land, depending on the configuration and available sensors. Low battery also initiates automatic return to home or safe landing, depending on remaining energy and distance to home. In the flight management simulation, the remote controller is modeled using the Simulink dashboard blocks, providing an interactive and flexible way to emulate pilot inputs and test various flight scenarios. A set of radio buttons, toggles, or drop-down menus on the dashboard allows users to manually switch between flight modes. Sliders or knobs are used to simulate stick commands for roll, pitch, yaw, and thrust. A manual timestamp modifier is to emulate RC signal loss. By modifying the update time or introducing a timeout, the system can detect the absence of RC signals, triggering fail-safe actions such as return to home or safe landing. The ground control station is implemented using aerospace dashboard blocks in Simulink. It displays the roll, pitch, heading, altitude, total speed, vertical speed, and propeller rotational speed. The ground control station allows to set the home point, which is used for return to home behavior. It define or modify reference trajectories for the drone to follow in trajectory mode. A manual timestamp override lets users simulate the loss of GCS communication. This triggers fail-safe behaviors in the flight management system, such as returning to home or safe landing. The Sensing Fault Injection module enables triggering of signal validity for altitude, position, and yaw angle. It also allows modification of the battery status to simulate low battery behavior. Next, let's take a closer look at the RC Command Processing module. The RC Command Processing module interprets inputs from the remote controller, such as roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle commands. 
These inputs are translated into set points that guide the drone's attitude and position control systems. Here we use the yaw axis command in stabilized mode as an example to illustrate the functionality of the RC command processing module. In this mode, pilot inputs from the remote controller are interpreted to control the drone's orientation. Specifically, for the yaw axis, a state flow chart is used to implement the decision-making logic. When the yaw command input from the RC is zero, indicating no rotation is requested, the system transitions into a hold mode. In this mode, the current yaw angle is captured and stored as the active command, effectively instructing the autopilot to maintain the drone's current heading. This ensures stable flight without unintended yaw drift. The system remains in hold mode until a non-zero yaw input is detected, at which point it exits hold mode and resumes following the new yaw command. This logic helps to provide smooth and intuitive yaw control, especially in manual or semi-autonomous flight scenarios. Next, we'll explore the Ground Control Station Waypoint Processing Module, which handles the reception and execution of waypoint commands sent from the GCS. The GCS Waypoint Processing Module includes two key features. Generating trajectories that guide the drone through specified waypoints at defined time points and setting the home point for return to home. During the simulation, clicking the Set Reference Trajectory button refreshes both the reference waypoints and the corresponding time points used for trajectory generation. Clicking the Set Home button updates the return to home point. Here again, State flow is used to manage the logic that transitions between the default return to home point and the user defined one. Finally, we will examine the modules responsible for detecting loss of connection with the RC and ground control station. In this implementation, connection loss is detected by monitoring the timestamp. If the timestamp does not update for over two seconds, the system flags the connection as lost. All right, let's wrap up this session. We have now covered the key modules of the flight management, including mode transition logics, RC command processing, ground control station waypoint processing, and connection loss detection. I hope this session has given you a clear understanding of how to model and simulate drone flight management using Simulink. In the next session, we will focus on the Sensor Fusion module, where we'll explore how to fuse multiple sensor data for state estimation. I look forward to your participation.